Thank you, Lord, today for this day that you have given us. I pray, God, for your Holy Spirit that you would move and that you would minister, refresh, touch, in Jesus' name, amen. Who are you? When I was a child, I do remember, <coughs> remember sitting beside the old black and white two television set, RCA Victor, you know, the dog that would sit there and, and uh, sit in the sit sitting position, watching the television, I would watch the Lone Ranger. How many remember the Lone Ranger? The Lone Ranger a long, long time ago. I remember when the Lone Ranger would, would uh, leave the scene on his white stallion named Silver, and as the stallion would rear up, you know what? He would shout out, the Lone Ranger would yell out, hi-ho, Silver, away! But after he was gone, you remember, someone was always kind of hanging around the background. They would say, who was that masked man anyway? Who was that masked man anyway? Well, this morning, we continue with our fall season of identity series entitled, Who Are You? And we want to unmask you, the real you. We want to reveal the real you. We want it, the hidden to become public. We want to make known some of the needs that are very, very common to all of us. I believe there's something that's very, very soothing and therapeutic about knowing that you're not alone in your needs. Many people feel like I'm all by myself. And so we've been going over these needs uh, one by one these past couple of weeks that everyone is the same. We all have common needs. And some of these I've been sharing with you. So we all need security. A couple of weeks ago, we all need to rebound from failures. We all need to listen and have someone listen to us. We shared that with you last Sunday. Everyone needs an ear that we bend their way so they can hear, so someone will hear their particular life and what they're going through. So today we want to share with you that we all need appreciation. Everyone here this morning has a deep, deep need to be appreciated. To be told that you have value. To be told that you mean something, you're special, you're light, and you're loved, and you have talents, you have gifts. When you hear those words, doesn't that just make you want to soar to the heights and do more things for God? It makes you feel good about yourself. Every one of us have a need to feel appreciated. Last Sunday morning, the youth shared on the platform a wonderful ministry a worship leading, and I shared, I said to them after they were done, you did a great job, and they lit up like a Christmas tree. It did something to them, and we know they did a marvelous job. Everyone needs to know that they're appreciated. There's a cry inside of all of us that goes like this, appreciate me, appreciate me just a little bit, give me a little pat on the back. It won't go to my head. That's what you're saying, it won't go to my head. It'll just encourage me to reach me. The truth is, many of us don't feel or many of us feel like we don't have a lot of value. So it's good when people can speak into our lives. The advertisement for donating blood goes this way. It's within you to give. It's within you to give. Appreciative words are within every one of us to give up. If everyone gave, Everyone would receive. I remember my first church. When I got to my first church, it was all new to me. Graduated from college, and I wasn't even sure how a pastor or preacher was supposed to feel. And I remember that, that I'd get a call regularly from my district superintendent. And whenever he'd call me, the first thing he'd say to me is, Hello, preacher! Hi, preacher! And then just those words, the way he said it, when he said it, how often he said it, meant so much to me because he said, I call me a preacher. I guess I am a preacher. And, and being a beginner, I wasn't quite sure what I was supposed to do and all these ins and outs, but he encouraged me, he enriched my life. When my father was alive, he would often, would often speak on Sunday evenings after the Sunday services. He'd say, Gary, how was the day? How did it go? And, and I told him, and, and Dad would tell me over and over again, Gary, you're doing one of the most marvelous things there is to do on the face of this earth. And my dad thought a lot of what I was doing. He enriched me, he encouraged me, and he just he kept me going. And, and, and when you say those words, they meant something to me, it kept me, and, that's, and the truth of the matter is, what I'm doing today is because people have spoken into my life and said, yes, you can do it. Yes, you can go to Bible college. Yes, you can go to the first church. Yes, you can make it. Because you have gifts. To use the Lord. Words of appreciation, they are powerful. They're effective. When I was a little boy, I would hear my mom 
say to my father, she'd say, Stephen, look how big Gary's getting. Look how big. And whenever I hear them say that, you know, stretch up. As tall as I can. You know, that's why I'm so tall today. <laughs> Six foot five. Because I stretched and stretched. Just think if I wouldn't have done that, how short I'd be. You have to cut this pulpit way, way down. But I remember what that made me feel like. I just wanted to grow more. Grow more. When I was a... Well, probably 14 or 15 years of age, my first job, I was a dishwasher in a restaurant called the Stonehouse Motel and Restaurant on Willow Street in Truro, Nova Scotia. I remember at Mr. Hader one time, he said, Gary, come over and shovel off, the front, shovel the snow away from my office doorstep. It's a step there. So I did, I went over, and as I was shoveling away, he came over with his wife, and he stood there and watched me, and he said to his wife, you know, dear, I think that we should give Gary 10 cents an hour He's doing such a good job, and I heard it. I want to show it all the better, and I'm going to do a good job. It does something to us to know that, hey, we're appreciated. Someone loves what I'm doing, and someone's speaking into my life. Well, I have a very, at home in my garage right now, waiting for me, I have a very, very, very aggressive, domineering, strong-willed German chef. She's about one year old now, a little over one year of age, and 99% of the time, don't let those looks deceive you. <laughs> She's right now saying, who, me? I'm not aggressive. I'm not strong-willed. That's medication. <laughs> but 99% of the time, here's what she hears from me. No! 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 She loves to eat rust and pick up metal and chew on No! That's all she hears from me. And I, I realized recently, it's not working that well. And so I thought, I better seek professional help here. Because she's either getting more and more aggressive and bigger and meaner. And so, not at me, but she takes it out on other people. You know, when I'm taking her for a walk, she lunges at them and she wants to bite them. <laughs> I saw professional help and so this professional dog trainer told me, you got to quit saying the word no. This is new concept for me. That's old school. Don't say the word no again. Praise her for good behavior and don't discipline her for bad. Okay? Let's try it. And I want you to know that is working so very, very well. It, it, it's amazing how it's working. I am now living in the garage. She's living in the house. She's eating my food. She's sleeping in my bed. She's wearing my slippers. And she's taking me for a walk. It works so very, very well. I encourage it. <laughs> You know what? It's within every one of us to give out words of appreciation. Isn't it? It's meeting a need. Everyone has a need. And it's meeting a need when we reach out and say, I appreciate you. Where's the praise? Tomorrow not only, it's not only Monday, but it's a holiday. Not only a holiday, but it's Remembrance Day. It's not a day to debate. Everyone, have, everyone of us have our views on the merits of war. And it's not a day to debate the merits of war. It's not a day to <coughs> debate whether we agree or not with where the troops have, have taken tours. It's not a day to debate your opinions and views. But it's a day to stop and think and to appreciate our military for who they are and for answering the call to duty. This is not for them alone. This is for us. And for our family and future freedom, many lives have already been lost while fighting for us in the name of freedom. Many lives have been injured and permanently scarred because they were on the front lines for us. Many are still out there with their boots on the ground and are risking their very life for us. Many spouses are back home and they're raising little children alone. A military's life is often difficult. It's not a time for duty. But it's a time to appreciate our troops and their families for their service, their sacrifice, and for their tremendous gift. Now, James chapter 3 tells us that this tongue love is small. Small memory. But he says this tongue is so powerful. It's so powerful that it can literally set the course of someone's, <coughs> someone's life. That's how powerful it is. It's so small. And yet it's like a steer wheel on a huge ocean freight line. It steers the way. It sets the course. It determines the destination. Where it's going to go. Last Sunday I said that we truly are our brother's keeper. 
That's what Cain cried. Am I my brother's keeper? Of course you are. This is what God's Word tells us through the rest of the pages of Scriptures. You are your brother's keeper. You are responsible. It's important what you say. It's important how you say it. Appreciative words are vital to hear. James goes on to say, with the tongue, we can praise our Lord. And he says also these words, and curse human beings. With the tongue, he says, it's possible that we can praise God and then curse each other. Just picture coming to the God's house like we've done this morning. Thank you, God. I worship you. I praise you. And then go out and curse our brother and sister, other human beings. James says that is not right. And he goes on to tell us why it's not right. Because we've been made in the likeness of this scripture. Never hit me like it hit me this past week. Because we've been made in the likeness of God. We've been made like Him. He is not like that. <coughs> Blessings and cursings do not flow from His mouth. And He says it's not right that you should do the same thing. He says that. We are made in the likeness of God. And it feels so much better anyways. To praise someone and build them up and say words of appreciation than to curse someone. Proverbs 18, 21 puts it this way. He says the tongue has the power has the power of life and death. It's within your power. When you use that tongue, you can speak out lovely words or death words. So what shall we do? In light of this, knowing what the book of Proverbs tells us, like they say in checkers, it's your move. What shall we do? I said this morning that we make a declaration before God. That we come before God and say, God, I will choose words of life. It is a decision because you won't always feel like it. It's going to take discipline because you won't always feel like it. He won't always be in season. You say before God, I choose words of life. I will read the future into someone's life. I will spur someone on to reach their dreams. I will spark someone on to achieve their goals. It's within all of us to let loose and unleash words of appreciation. And when we do that, it's meeting someone's needs. We all win. Hebrews 10, 24 tells us that we should consider. That means we ought to stop and we ought to pre-plan ways that we can spur one another on. Have you ever done that? Ever got up in the morning and said, God, I want to think right now of a plan and a way to spur with their name in there, that person on to do more for you. That's what he's saying here. Pre-planning, premeditated, prepared, purposely, purposeful, giddy up go words for something that may need your exact words of appreciation. Oh, the words, the Bible over and over again tells us and encourages us, this is what we ought to do. Hebrews 10, 25 says, encourage one another. Everyone needs words of appreciation. Proverbs 10, verse 11. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. Fountain of life. That's the, that's the way the righteous should be. Out of our mouth comes fountains and springs of life. That's what you come out of the saint's mouth. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 10. Just pity anyone who, have, who falls and has no one to help them up. Everyone needs and encourage you. Never. Ephesians 4 and 29 says, build up one another. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 14 says, encourage the faint-hearted and help the weak. We can see when someone is weak. We can see when someone is fainting and that is your time. That is your season to jump in and say, hey, I want to tell you that you're a person of value. I appreciate you. What the Bible is telling us. Ephesians 4 and 12 says, tells us to build up the body. Proverbs 25, verse 11 says that a word that they spoke is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. That wonderful marvelous bit of coin. A word that they spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Colossians 3 verse 16 tells us to let the words of Christ dwell in us richly. Philippians 4 verse 8 tells us if there's anything excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, he says, 
think on those things, may I also put in there that we should also speak about those things. If there's anything praiseworthy, let's use our tongue. Speak it out and to bless them. We're God's creation. We are fearfully and we're so marvelously made. We need to value and appreciate one another. Those words and expressions are within each one of us to give. And so as I was thinking about this past week, about this message, I thought to myself, well, what would be the hindrances? What do you think the hindrances would be to us really expressing appreciation to each other? I had all kinds of them written down. First, I thought, well, I can't be that many. I come up with ten. And there's probably more. Maybe you can add two. But here's ten for your consideration. Why we... What hindrances there are to us expressing words of appreciation to one another. Number one, it just doesn't come natural. And I know people, some people would, would say that are here this morning, say, it just, I wasn't raised that way. We just never appreciate it. We're not accustomed to vocalizing and saying <coughs> how much we appreciate someone. Number two, another hindrance. It's so much easier to say nothing. I agree with you. It's always easier to do nothing. It's always easier to say nothing. Not always right, but it's always easy. It's easy. Number three, another hindrance is jealousy. Jealousy. Yes, jealousy. Some want what others have. And so when someone sees a gift or a talent in someone, and someone is using that gift, and they're jealous. They're never going to go up and praise them. For it. They're jealous. I want that ability. I want that talent. And so they will not go and appreciate it. Say they appreciate it. Number four is insecurity. Another hindrance to people vocalizing appreciation. Insecurity. They're insecure. Some like to have others well beneath them. So they tear down. Well, they'll tear them down for the gifts, tear them down for the abilities, everything they do. Ah, pass, pass, pass. Why? They're insecure. And they want to tear them down so they can build themselves up. That's a fleshly battle. You know something? There's a lot of people in that camp. Lots of people. Insecure about themselves. And so they make other people suffer. And I've said it. Number five. Fear of giving them compliments. Another hindrance. Afraid the person might get a swell head. Oh, it might go to their head. It might get puffed up with pride if I say I appreciate it. Not Most of us don't think too. Most of us... And this is where we should be a balance, most of us in here. But where we should be, we should be thinking of ourselves. We've got to get up to the average. So, it'll never go to that. Okay. Um, what did I say? Fear of people going to come. Number six, they're unsure of how it will be received. What if, re what, what if it's received the wrong way? That could be a hindrance. Number seven, wrong assumption. The person does not need to be told. They don't need to be told that they're appreciated. They seem pretty confident themselves. They pretty well know what they're doing, and, and they got their act together. It's wrong assumption. Number eight, lack of consideration. Some just have never thought about purposely doing it. Number nine, lack of awareness. They're not really aware of how words of appreciation can alter the course of someone's life in a positive way. They're just not aware of it. Number ten, some people just live in a negative world. This is a big one, too. All people, some people, all they can see is negativity. Let me give you an illustration. In one of the churches I passed, I remember there was a congregational business meeting, and the members gathered together. We voted on, secret ballot, voted on some particular business. I can't remember what it was, but I do remember this, that it was almost 100% in favor, and there was probably just one or two negative votes, or no votes. And right after this, the business meeting is over. This man comes up to me and says, I just want you to know that I'm the one that voted no. I want you to be aware of it. I said, well, why would you want to tell me? Because someone had to vote no. Why? Why would that be? Because someone had to do it. So I thought, I mean, that man lived in a negative world. That was just a um, response, an outward demonstration of his kind of life he was living. Everything was negative. He was actually depressing to be around. Always, but always negative, negative. He would 
ignore me and then call me and tell me I ignored you on purpose. <laughs> I see you downtown, I wait till he called me up. I ignored you. Why? I just ignored you. I just ignored you. Why? You he kept me on my knees. He kept me humble before the Lord. He kept me crying out to God. He kept me mad. I left it one time. Oh, I'm saying too much. No, I'm not. I left it one time at pizza, and I said, not even God can help you. Did I say that? I walked up. In his frame of mind, not even God can help you. He had changed. I'm so happy to report to you that man changed. He changed his world. He changed his negative, negative, negative talk. He stopped saying all these terrible, terrible things. God, that a mom is worth his life. How do you like that? Word? All of us need words of appreciation. And if you're here this morning, you're saying, you know, I can just use some words of appreciation. There are seasons, I'm convinced, in all of our lives where we need words of appreciation more than another time. <laughs> and if you're here this morning, you're saying, well, I can use words of appreciation. Let me share with you these three things. Number one, Allow others to make a fuss over you. When's the last time you allowed someone to make a fuss over you? We're not really good at that, are we? No, we're not. But allow, see, I've just shared with this congregation that it's important and it's vital to share words of appreciation to one another. So I believe that by God's Holy Spirit, he's going to be speaking into people's lives. And what he's saying by his spirit is, I want you to go to that person and I want you to tell them you appreciate them, you love. I just believe that God by your spirit is going to do that. And so that means someone, I believe, is going to come across your path and they're going to say to you, I love you, I value you, I see your gifts, I see your abilities, and I appreciate when they do. Be ready to receive it. Allow someone to make a fuss over you. You may not like it at first because it's probably, you know, we're like, no, forget it. No, no. No. Okay, yes. Yes. No. You know how it is. We, we just, we're not all that good at it. You know, instead of hanging your head low, <laughs> thank you so much for the confidence. Thank you. Allow someone to make a fuss over me. I just believe it ought to be happening more and more and more in the house of God. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Number two, then I wanted to go back to yourself. Love and appreciate the man in the mirror. The woman in the mirror. You know what they say is true. Hurting people hurt people. And if hurting people hurt people, what do you think loving people do? They love people. What do you think if someone says, I'm okay, I love myself, then they're going to love others? You see, I told you earlier what that person was negative. He didn't love himself. He hated himself. When you start liking himself, and you start realizing he's a, a creation of God that God made, you start liking himself, loving himself, you start loving others. You can't possibly out love others and hate yourself too. You've got to have a good, good self-image. Love yourself. People lash out at others. It's probably a good indication they've been lashing out at themselves. They've been beating up on themselves. They've been in that squared circle ring, pounding on themselves into the ground. How are they ever going to have words of appreciation coming out of them to somebody else? It's impossible. See, Romans tells us, it just tells us don't think too highly of yourself. Have a balanced view. He says, think of yourself with sober judgment, balanced. It's not wrong to appreciate yourself. It's not wrong to look in the mirror and say, hey, you look pretty good today. It's not wrong at all. Will you please go home and do this? The mirror breaks, it's not my fault. <laughs> Just go home and do it. Say, hey, you handsome angel. You thought I was going to say that with you. I did. It's not wrong to appreciate. It's not wrong to come out and say, God, you fearfully and wonderfully made me. I like myself. I like my abilities. I like my talents. I like the way you made me. And when you start liking yourself, appreciating yourself, you will start finding it much, much easier to 
love appreciate try number three and lastly realize that you are so loved by God you're so loved by God if anything if anything should just stir something inside of you and you feel like hey there's nobody else around nobody else really cares God loves you so much it's immeasurable you can't even measure the depth of his love the height of his love the width of his love 